you know, there's so there's multiple layers of, of violence, of everyday ordinary violence that indigenous people um, experience in these border towns. In fact, um, I, I can't remember who said this, that I think it was Nick or Melanie who said that border towns are actually um, bastions of violence against indigenous people, that this is where you see some of the just incredible structures of violence against indigenous people on a daily basis. And as the chair of the Human Rights Commission, um, it's very difficult, it has been difficult to address um, police violence. Um, we still need to have more than an, a conversation, more than education in terms of even beginning to talk about what policing does, what police violence is, um, because we're dealing with a generation of Diné um, who were raised to um, think that policing as a structure is somehow some kind of safety mechanism when everything, um, our experiences, our observations, our laws and our policies tells us that it's absolutely not about safety or about protection. Um, I listen to different conversations um, from our leaders and we have a huge problem with bootlegging, with alcohol use, with meth, with um, sex trafficking. Um, and the response, like a knee jerk response is, we need to ask the FBI to come in. We need to um, beef up our law enforcement. And we haven't even moved the conversation to talking about abolition, to talking about what does it mean when you move away from relying on the police um, and beginning to form networks of safety and protection. We haven't begun to think about what is it exactly that we're talking about when we talk about restoring a matrilineal system. Okay? Um, we're not anywhere near that. And so some of the conversation has to be around um, promoting a vision that talks about creating our own networks of, of community, our own networks of kin, um, uh, forms of protection, because those those were already in there. Our, our former indigenous ways of thinking, our Diné ways of thinking, we already have the models there. We already have these, these visions that were there. It just takes a process of talking through and thinking through. And so um, to my, you know, I find it very difficult to try to have these conversations. Um, uh, in uh, maybe tw when did I join the Human Rights Commission? 2000 something, six, seven something. Uh, no, 2012 or something. Anyway, um, I brought the conversation of, of um, gender roles, of um, violence against Navajo women and gender, gendered violence. And it's now become more common come more recognizable to talk about gender diversity than it had been um, before 2005 when the Navajo Nation passed the Dene Marriage Act. You know, and these days I wonder, um, we have a recognition um, and acknowledgement of our relatives who are um, non-binary non gendered, but how has our tribal nations uh, followed suit in terms of its structures, in terms of putting in acknowledgement, resources, structure, um, health care, um, resources, acknowledge of these kinds of relationships? Um, so, you know, I was I've been thinking about that for the several days, several, several days when I begin to write about um, gendered right, gendered violence, uh, particularly on the Navajo Nation. And I don't think about things as progress because that's such a Biligana thing to think that somewhere there's a projection in the, in the future that things are going to be better. So I don't think about things like that, but I'm just thinking about how do we keep this conversation going? How do we continue to do more than just inform, do more than educate? So, um, you know, we're, we're planning, when we did um, public hearings in Albuquerque, um, when David was talking about it, we did get um, some testimony from our relatives on the streets and they absolutely had nothing good to say about um, policing in Albuquerque. Okay, the response to the police was, 
um, excuse me, I'm going to get all crazy here now. But to think that somehow cultural sensitivity training is going to accomplish anything. You know, they ask you for your for your um, clan and then they beat the crap out of you. You know, I just that comes out of the civil rights reports of the 1974. That was one of their recommendations. And indigenous people have tended to run with that thing about cultural sensitivity training. I just I, I you know, I try to keep my mouth shut so I won't go um, on a rampage again. But I think we have a long ways to go um, before we even begin to think about abolition and uh, 